I'm blessed to be able to welcome on the number 84 player in the class of 2020, a four-star recruit in the number 16 power forward, along with the number four overall player in a stacked Minnesota class. He's the ninth highest recruit in Badger history, and he's part of the 19th ranked recruiting class, along with guys like Lauren, the Twins, and Steven. He committed on September 18th, and now he's preparing to have a big-time season after finishing up with East Ridge and Ben Carlson. What's going on today, bro? Not too much. Thanks for having me. No problem, bro. So I mean, let's just get right into this, man. I mean, you're in the middle of a season right now. Talk about what it's like playing at East Ridge right now. Uh, I mean, we have a really good group of guys. I mean, it's been a lot of fun. I think we're 12 and 5, 13 and 5, but we've played probably the hardest schedule in the state so far. So I think it's going to help us a lot uh, when playoffs come. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt, this year is a really special year in Minnesota. I mean, you don't hear about a lot of talent coming from Minnesota in terms of historically, but we got guys, obviously, you're a part of guys. You see Jalen Suggs. You see guys like Chet. I mean, it's a stat class. Talk about what it's like seeing Minnesota basketball turn to what it is right now. Yeah, I mean, in the past couple of years, I think Minnesota has been really slept on in terms of his basketball talent. I know there's been a ton of, a couple five-star guys come through Minnesota, but I think my class is obviously really good. We've got, I don't know how many guys ranked in the top 100, but even like in the younger grades. But I think definitely Minnesota is one of the most slept on states in terms of basketball talent. Absolutely. Now talk a little about your team. I mean, like you said, you guys are off to a great start. You guys have played a hard schedule. Talk about what it's been like. T- talk about your teammates and how they play with you. Uh, I mean, we have this year, we, I was only a like, returning starter from last year. We have a senior who came off the bench last year who, who's playing a lot more this year. And then we have a bunch of other younger guys. So I think – I mean, we're really talented. We're just really young. But I think we've playing those tough teams early on. It's going to help us a lot once playoff comes and hopefully help us make it to the state tournament down the road. But definitely, we have a lot of talent. And I think we're, we're starting to put it together as a team, which is which is good. That's big time. And then how about the season so far? Has it maybe been one matchup that you've really liked more than others? Um, I mean, I think our best win was against Park Center. I mean, that was our second game of the year. They were ranked number one in the state. I think we were like five or six, and we it was a big time at, atmosphere. It was at one of the big gyms in Minnesota. It was a sold out crowd, and we beat them by six or seven. I think that's definitely our statement one of the year so far. That's big time. And then, is there maybe a matchup you enjoy playing against? Um, I mean, I, I, I've been uh, friends and teammates with Dawson Garcia for the past, like. I don't know how much since eighth grade. I think we've been on the same AU team. We played him the first game this year. I mean, I'm good friends with him. So I definitely I like playing against him. He's a really good player. So we definitely we definitely go back and forth. We've been playing against each other for a long time. So that's always a fun matchup going against him. That's awesome. And kind of talk about that. I mean, obviously, like you just talked about Dawson. But there's a lot of the guys I'm sure you know that have been able to live out the same dream you have, being able to go D1. Talk about some of the guys you know and really what it's like seeing them live out your same dream. Yeah, definitely. I know, like, Dane, Kerwin. I mean, pretty much all the guys on my AU team are going some level of Division One. I know there's one guy going D2, but he's going to be uh, have a really big impact there. So I think just being around those guys all the time, it was just, I think it just helped every one of us get better and prepare for college. Mm-hmm. And one of the guys you were able to play with your AAU basketball, obviously playing with D1 Minnesota, talk about playing with Steven. Obviously, he's now going to Wisconsin as well. Yeah. What's that relationship like? I mean, I really like him. I think he's pretty similar to me. He's a little, he plays similar to me. He's a little bit taller. I mean, but I think he's a really good really good guy. I like him a lot. I'm really excited to spend the next four years with him at Wisconsin. I think it'll be a lot of fun. I think we we play really well together, and he's a he's a great guy. I like him a lot. Having that chemistry, being established in NAAU basketball is a huge thing. And talk about all these, obviously the other recruits. I mean, you guys got like guys like Lauren. Obviously, you got mm-hmm. to talk about what they're like. I mean, I, I was out there for uh, – I was on an official one. Uh, Johnny and Jordan were taking their officials in there, so I got to meet them all and talk to them. I really like them. I still, I still have to meet uh, Lauren and Carter and Carter Goodmore in person, but I've talked to talked to them a little bit over social media and texted them a little bit. So I mean, they're all really great guys, and I'm just really looking forward to getting there in the summer and getting to know them even more. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, you guys are one of the highest Wisconsin recruiting classes mm-hmm. ever. I mean, it's a huge thing, and one thing a lot of people talk about is really kind of a change in the way that you guys are built. I mean, there's a lot more athleticism coming in there. Talk about really what's going to be like changing the culture at Wisconsin. Yeah, I mean, like you said, I think my class brings something different to Wisconsin. Like in the past, usually Wisconsin played like a slower game, kind of slow it down, more half-court game. I think definitely my class, at least in the class below us, I think we have a lot of athletic guys. 
And I know Wisconsin has, has some of those guys right now, but I think my class will bring something different, that, that like speed and athleticism. I think that could change things up, how they play a little bit, but I think it'll, it'll, it'll be for the better, I think. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt, obviously people look at Wisconsin, the team that's a really well-known program, but they're obviously not on the highest level. But then mm-hmm. you look at teams, obviously they have a historic run a couple of years ago, obviously guys like Frank Kaminsky and guys like them. Yeah. Talk about what it's like potentially putting together an elite championship run like they were able to do. I mean, like, they've done it before in the past, so I know, like, in my freshman year, we're, we could, we're going to be really good, I think, so we could have a run like that. And I mean, like, they have great coaches there. They have a really good history, like you said. So, I mean, they're a really good program. I think every year they have the uh, the potential to make a run like that. So, that's I mean, that's one of the reasons I chose them, because they – they make it to the tournament almost every year. They made it to Final Fours, all that. So, I mean, they have a really good his- history with that. I'm looking to continue that when me and my class gets there. Without a doubt, you talked about the coaching staff. Who was maybe the coach that influenced you or you really had the closest relationship with? Um, I mean, I can definitely Coach Krabenhoff. I've known him the longest. Like, he started talking to me when I was a freshman, so that was four years ago. I've known him the longest, obviously, Coach Guard. Coach Oliver, Coach Tucker's a little bit newer just because he was hired recently. But yeah, I've definitely Coach Krabenhoff. I've known – I've been close to him since my freshman year. Like he was the first – the first college coach that ever talked to me. So, mm-hmm. That's awesome. So talk about what their relationship is like. I mean, obviously, people love the recruitment process, but obviously there's a lot of pressure comes with it. Talk about what it was like, how you were able to handle different coaches and talk with them. I mean, I was lucky. I think pretty much all the coaches I talked to were really great people. I mean, none of them were, were bad guys. They're all, all really nice, really respectful. So I definitely, definitely made a lot of like friendships with coaches. I mean, like so I know some of them still like look out for me and stuff, even though I'm not going to those schools. But yeah, I definitely learned a lot, met a lot of new people, and I just those relationships are going to be huge down the road because I'm, I mean, not many people get to be recruited like I did or most people. So I mean. It's just, I was really lucky to be a part of it, and I'm thankful to, to have met all the people that I met in the recruiting process. Without a doubt, and talk a little about Coach Guard. I mean, obviously, he's the coach, the head coach of the team. What's your guys' relationship like at this point? Yeah, I mean, I've known him three or four years, same with Coach Krabenhoff. I mean, he's a really great guy. He's a good coach, too. I mean, I trust him a lot. I mean, he's said it like it is to me for like couple, four years now so i know he's telling me the truth when he tells me stuff so i think that's the biggest thing i trust him a lot i'm really excited to go out there and play for him next year mm-hmm. absolutely and i think when you look at him mean, you're now ranked a top 10 recruit in wisconsin history i mean that's something that is obviously a high honor so talk about what it's like seeing that you are one of the best players to come into wisconsin yeah i mean like yeah that's a pretty cool honor but i think I know once I get there, the rankings really don't mean anything. You just got to go there and prove yourself as a freshman. So, I mean, that's that's my goal. I just want to work as hard as I can. I know hopefully come out there as one of the better players to go through Wisconsin. But, I mean, just my goal day one is just to work as hard as I can. And, I mean, things will turn out the way I want it to if I just do that, I think. Absolutely. So how do you approach that when you first get to head into Wisconsin and you head out there? What's it going to be like? Really, what's your expectations of how you're going to adjust? Um, I think the biggest adjustment will just be the speed of the game. Probably this is uh, physicality. Obviously, the big times, probably the most physical league in the whole country. So I think that's the biggest thing. But I mean, they want me to be ready to play right away. So I definitely think getting a lot stronger this off season and just and just working on my game is going to help me transition a lot easier to my freshman year. Mm-hmm. So talk about the guys on the roster right now. Is there anyone <laughs> you particularly have a really close relationship with? Yeah, I mean, when I was on my official there, I got to meet, I think I met every single player there. I hung out probably the most with uh, Brad, Micah, uh, Tyler Wall. Those are probably the three guys, and Joe Hedstrom too. But yeah, definitely probably the closest to those four guys just because I've been around them the most. I mean, they're they're great guys. They're all I like them a lot. So I'm definitely really excited. I know I only have one year with Brad and Micah and all the other juniors, but I think I really like the other younger guys too. So I'm, I'm excited to get out there with them. That's awesome. So talk kind of talk about what your visits are like. When you go on an official visit, what's kind of the process like? What's the day like when you go out there? Um, I mean, I think when I'm out, the, out there, I, no, never mind. It wasn't a football game. But, I mean, it's a lot of meetings with the coaches. You hang out with the players for, like, most of the day just to see what they're like. And then, I mean, like, we went and shot in the gym for a little bit, like, 
did a photo shoot, went out to dinner. I mean, you go out to eat a lot, which is pretty nice. But I think the biggest thing is just, like, you build those relationships with the coaches and the players. I mean, that's probably what you do, like, 75 80% of the time. Mm-hmm. And so, obviously, I mean, having a character fit, having a match of guys that are a lot like you is a huge thing. Mm-hmm. So what were some of the character traits that you really looked for in a program? Um, I just – probably just guys who have, like, similar values as me, just people who like to work hard. I mean, I think they're all pretty similar to me. Like, they have, like, six or seven guys from Minnesota, so I think that's definitely a big draw for me. But just, like, guys with, who work hard, I mean, just smart players. I mean, just really good people in general, I think. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And so then kind of talk about also, I mean, you had a lot of schools in your final grouping. Mm-hmm. What, were, what were the schools in your opinion that you really saw were heavy fits possibly go other, go there as opposed to Wisconsin potentially? Yeah, so I had 15 schools, and then I cut it down to six, and those were uh, Iowa State, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Xavier, Purdue, Stanford. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, those were my final six for a reason. They were the ones that kept in contact with, with me the most. I mean – I really respect all their schools. I just felt like Wisconsin was the best fit for me at that point. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So when you go down, you start trying to trim your list. What were some of the things that you liked about all those programs? I think the biggest thing, I think they all had really good coaching staffs that I really liked. I know when I went on my visits to those schools, like I really liked their coaches. Like, they had good players. I felt like Wisconsin, like I felt the most comfortable at Wisconsin. Like, I mean, when I was on my visit, I just felt like, I was with guys who I like a lot when I was playing with them. No doubt. I mean, you kind of talk about some of those guys. I mean, being able to play against them, but mm-hmm. when did you start building the connection and know that you guys might want to team up with each other? Um, well, I knew – I kind of had a feeling for a while that Steven might end up at Wisconsin. I mean, like, knowing him and, like, knowing that he was going there was definitely a big bonus for me. And same with, uh, obviously, Lauren committed – like way before everyone else. So knowing that they already had a good guy like that, I mean, that was that was reassuring. And then the Davis brothers, I mean, they're really good players too. I know, knew them a little bit from before, but definitely just seeing all those guys commit like before I me mean, definitely helped, helped me make that decision, I think. Mm-hmm. So was it more like the coaches kind of talked to you about, here's some of the guys coming, or were you guys maybe talking away from the team, just kind of discussing about possibly wanting to team up? Um. I'd say it's probably more the coaches. Like, I mean, they text me a little bit before I committed, but I'd probably say it was more the coaches who were recruiting me. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of those guys you talk about are guys that have been raising a lot. I mean, Lauren, I think, started the year off around like 150 area, and he's now in the top 100 in a lot of polls. I mean, obviously the Davises are doing great as well, and Steven is now at right around the top 100. So talk about knowing you have a lot of guys that are constantly improving and really going to be great teammates down the road. Yeah, I mean, it's great. I think we're all getting better. Like, the rankings, like, obviously show that people are getting better. I mean, I think that'll only continue once we get there. So, I mean, that's a really great sign that guys are working hard and getting better and getting the, getting the respect they earn. But I definitely, it's definitely a good sign for down the road. So, they'll continue to keep working harder and our team will be better because of that. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt. And down the road, I mean, eventually rather be one or two years or all four years. I mean, mm-hmm. whatever the path may be, I think your goal will be to play professionally and specifically in the NBA so talk about really what's the things you need to do that you see to potentially reach that, that, that destination. Yeah, I mean, I think that's been my goal forever, play professionally, whether that's NBA or overseas somewhere. But I definitely think the way the game is going, uh, especially at my size, just being able to shoot the ball really well, just being really versatile, which I think I do a good amount of that right now. But obviously I'm going to have to continue that if I want to play professionally. But definitely shooting the ball, being able to handle the ball, and then being able to guard multiple multiple positions on defense, I think those are the three biggest things if you want to play professionally. You have to be able to do that no matter how tall you are, but especially at my size, those are, you have to know how to do those things really well. Without a doubt. Is there maybe a player that you kind of mod your game after? Um, I mean, there's a couple guys, kind of Kevin Love, Gordon Hayward, a little bit of Giannis because I, I bring the ball up a lot for my high school team, but definitely kind of like, I think Gordon Hayward is probably a good comparison, or I think that's a good comparison for me. Like, shoots the three, can get to the hoop, post up a little bit, just do a little bit of everything. So, I mean, those are probably three of the guys who I think I have some similarities to, I guess. Mm-hmm. Without a doubt. And so, has there been any maybe players that are either former college players, current college players, or professional players, maybe have had an impact in your life at all? Um, I mean, actually, I've played with Mike 
Bergeron, who went to Wisconsin in a pro-am league in Minnesota. I played with Tyus Jones in that pro-am league. I played against uh, Shabazz Napier. Like I've played against a bunch of those NBA guys from the Timberwolves in a couple of summer leagues in Minnesota. So, I mean, I mean, Tyus was really helpful. Like, he was giving me tips and stuff and just being able, being able to play with a guy like that who's at such a high level and learning from him. And even playing with Mike from uh, Wisconsin, just knowing what, knowing what he thought of Wisconsin – even other some other guys from Wisconsin I've known I've played with them some older guys just learning different things from them, I guess and you talked earlier about the kind of the impact and how knowing that there's a lot of guys from your hometown being in Minnesota coming out of Wisconsin mm-hmm. talk about really what it's like and how it was like seeing so many players from Minnesota go there um I think it's really reassuring because I know Wisconsin has a really good history of developing guys from Minnesota and like using guys from Minnesota to get far in the NCAA tournament and helping them get to the professional level. So I definitely, I think they have like a a really good system of development for guys like me, especially coming from Minnesota. So I think that's definitely was a big draw for me, just knowing I have a good history with guys like me. Absolutely. And then before I let you go, I was like wrapping up a couple of different questions. The first one being who in your life would you say has been your biggest role model? Um, Definitely my parents. I know they've been with me. Obviously, my whole life, but they have always stuck with me, even when times haven't been the best. So, definitely, definitely, my parents, they've helped me with, uh, helped me through a lot of life so far. That's awesome. I mean, definitely having mm-hmm. that blessing of having parents that are there that want to embrace you and help you get to the goals that you have set for you is a huge thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, I mean, you can thank them enough. Like, they do, I mean, they do everything. Like, they're, they've done a, I mean, they're the best, honestly. Like, can do, can do most stuff I do without them. So, that's awesome. And then my final question is like wrapping up with this, talking about faith a little bit. How would you say God has helped impact you to get you to the point you're at today? Um, I mean, probably the biggest thing is I think he gave me a really good work work ethic. Not like not even just on the basketball court, just just in school, like in life in general. I'm blessed with that. Just being able to work hard at everything I do, and that I think that's not only helped me a lot in basketball, but I think it's helped me a lot in life too. So I think that's probably the the biggest thing I think I've been blessed with, I guess you could say. Definitely taking the characteristics that he gives us and just following the path he has set in front of us is a huge thing because we all know mm-hmm. something very special. Yeah, definitely. I know everyone's a little different, but everyone's got, everyone has a plan. So, I mean, just got to do what you do and you'll end up where you're supposed to be. Without a doubt, man. But I appreciate you taking time to come on today, my guy. Obviously, best luck finishing up your high school career. Enjoy the rest of your season, your senior season, and I'm excited to see what you get done from here on out. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Uh, no problem, bro. God bless. All right, you too. Um, blessed to be able to welcome on the number 90 overall player in the class of 2020, the four-star guard, and also number three overall player in Michigan. He obviously is a part of one of the best Wisconsin cl- recruiting classes ever. He's one of the star players that was on the Family Detroit, and now one of the leaders on St. Mary, which is 9-1, and one, and Lauren Bowman. What's going on today, bro? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? <clears throat> Pretty good. So, I mean, let's just talk about your season so far. I mean, you guys are 9-1. You're putting up another great season. Talk about what it's like right now. Man, um, everything's clicking right now. Um, you know, I think team's biggest struggle when the first season first starts is, you know, gelling, you know, new guys playing with uh, other new guys, you know, just getting that overall team chemistry. But right now, um, I feel like our team chemistry is at an all-time high. We took a loss the other night. It was a tough one. But, um, you know, we bounced back the other night, um, last Tuesday night uh, with a win. So, I think uh, – you know, we just got to keep working and um, stay hungry. We've been playing pretty good, though. Without a doubt. I mean, obviously, that's why you're the 9-1. and one. But talk about your role on the team. I mean, you've been averaging 20-plus points almost your entire high school career now. Talk about what it's been like getting more and more of a role each year. Um, I would say from a freshman year, you know, that's just your year you come in and, you know, just trying to learn everything, just how, you know, freshmen come in and college. You know, it's just a learning curve, you know, playing with older, stronger guys. And then your sophomore year, you know, you get a little bit more experience than – you know, your junior year and then your finally your senior year, it's just your time to do you and, you know, lead your team and whatever they need. So if that's scoring, rebounding, passing, you know, just you got to be the overall leader of the team. And now, obviously, you are one of the top players, obviously one of the guys that could be contending for winning some of the big awards after the season. So talk about you and what, what it'd be like to start winning some big time awards like that. Oh, man, it would just be a, a, a complete blessing, um, you know, just the overall hard work you know, that you put in during the off seasons and during the season, you know, just to see it uh, come to 
fruition and, you know, just, just working your tail off, man, to get some big time awards like that would just be a, a blessing. I mean, there's a lot of top players, obviously, in the Michigan area. Talk about some of the guys that you see also being some of the top players that you really are excited to see and play against. Yeah, um, we just played my boy JT, Jalen Terry, the other, the other mm-hmm. week. Um, explosive electric guard, one of the best guys I've ever played against, you know. And then you got Isaiah Jackson over at Water Vermont. Um, you got uh, Scooby Johnson, um, Ryan Rollins that we didn't we played Dakota last year. We didn't get to play them this year, but um, it's a lot of top talent. I'm probably missing some more guys off the top of my head, but you know, just Michigan is a really slept on state when it comes to top talent and you know the country. So I just feel like we got we got some hoopers. Not only that, I mean, obviously you guys are power five players, a lot of those kind of guys, but just on your own roster alone, there's a lot of D1 players. I mean, you guys have at least five players. Talk about what it's like playing alongside them. Oh man. Um, Playing with those guys is just, is just great. Um, Kareem, Peter, um, Jason Drake, Julian Roper, just guys that um, I've come to you know know and love. Just being uh, battle tested with them throughout uh, every single day in practice and then in the games, you know, we just really came close to each other. So I love playing with those guys. Those are my brothers, man. Without a doubt, what has been maybe your favorite or most memorable moment so far in your high school career? Oh man, um, I would say. Um, probably my sophomore year, I hit a, I think I hit a, a half court buzzer beater for the game winner. And then, um, you know, that was one big one. Um, another one, we won districts, I think back to back years, um, we wanted to go farther, but you know, that's always an accomplishment too. But, and then, um, last year I made first team all state, uh, first time someone made it from St. Mary's in a, quite a while. So, um, my name is up in the gym and stuff like that. So just, you know, seeing your hard work pay off and, you know, being able to leave your mark at, at, at the school you're at. So that's that's what I would say. Absolutely. And so obviously you want to get more awards. I mean, you probably will be making first team again. You're going to get a lot of those things. But I think the ultimate goal would be to win state championship this year. So talk about what is it going to be like getting to that point? What do you guys need to do to get to that? Man, we just got to stay hungry. I feel like um, our team is just really, really talented. But, um, you know, talent only gets you so far. You know, you got to do the little stuff, the intangibles, you know, rebound and boxing out, you know, just just the little stuff to get you get you further and um, do do stuff that everybody don't want to do. So that's just not getting complacent. We got to stay on each other, you know, just just staying hungry because I feel like the only team that's going to beat us is ourselves. We going that's that's how I feel. Mm-hmm. I think that mentality is talked about something that's evident and a lot of people obviously talk about that. And that's why you've been able to grow, obviously, from being not ranked that high and now obviously growing out into the top 100. Talk about what it's been like constantly moving up in the rankings and getting more and more respect. Um, It's just been uh, crazy to see how everything unfolded um, coming off last summer. Um, at first, I wasn't going to play AAU with the family. And then um, I was like, you know, it's my last AU uh, summer, so I might as well go out and play against the best of the best. And um, that really helped me um, playing against those top guys. Um, night in and night out just pushed me. And then um, ultimately I got I got a lot of uh, um, a lot of respect um, that a lot of people didn't know me. So, you know, just being able to constantly know that, like I said before, that your hard work does pay off and, you know, people will recognize you. So that's what I would say. Yeah, and then talk about now when you first started getting recognition. You got your offer, obviously, around a sophomore year time. Talk about what it was like when you first got that stop. When you first got the first offer. Oh man, I was just um, ecstatic, man. Um, I remember like it was yesterday. Um, it was after the uh, a, a tournament in the summer, and um, my AAU coach had told me that the uh, University of Buffalo had offered me. And um, mind you, I was a 16 year old playing with 17 year old, so I always played up. And um, all those guys I played with, I already had offers. You know, everybody was excited for me because it was my first one. So I just remember that day. It was on April 1st. You know, I had called my family and told them or whatever. So um, it's just a blessing just being able to know that you can possibly go to school for free. Absolutely. I think that's something that no matter what stage of your career you're in, and rather you're being number one player in the country or you're just getting your first offer as a senior or whatever it may be, I think when you know that a college coach wants you, they're going to embrace you and you got to go to school for free. That's an awesome. That's really just an incredible thing. Yeah, for sure. No doubt. Um, I tell people all the time, like, um, I don't know where I would be without basketball. I don't know what I would be doing because um, I definitely wouldn't be going to school for free. So I tell you that. But. That's a big time blessing, obviously. I mean, that's something that people love. But at the same time, it can be a little stressful trying to figure out what school is, figuring that course out. So talk about what was it like, obviously, leading up to your commitment? Um, It was actually kind of fun for me. Um, 
at first. And then, you know, obviously the, the wear and tear of, of recruiting, uh, it kind of gets to you. So that's why I kind of not want to say end of my early, but I just went with the best choice for me and my family. So um, I try to tell people during the recruiting process, you got to just weigh out your options and be realistic. A lot of people wanted me to wait out for a couple Michigan schools and stuff like that, but um, that just wasn't my route. Um, Wisconsin was coming heavy. And, um, you know, I tell kids all the time, you got to go where you're wanted. So they wanted me. And, you know, I felt the felt the great love when I went down there to visit. I went on two official visits and, you know, the atmosphere and I just fell in love with the place. So I just tell people, go where you're wanted. And Wisconsin wanted me. So, you know, I just I just went with that. No doubt. I think that's something, too, that's big. Cause I feel like so many people do look for the big offers, rather be the biggest school in your state or just a Kentucky or Duke or Kansas, whatever it may be. But a lot of times that can work out for some players. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. obviously they only have how many players you can actually play in rotation. But exactly, one of the schools exactly. that are not highly viewed, something like what John Morant did. Obviously, he's the prime example right now. Just going to that school, you get embraced. Obviously, you can work out and you can get your end all, end all goal of being in the NBA eventually. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so were there any schools that you really felt really wanted you and really did embrace you almost as near as much as Wisconsin did? Um, I would say uh, – Butler was was uh, trailing me heavy. Um, I actually was supposed to take a visit there before um, I committed to Wisconsin. I ended up getting sick. Um, something happened like that. Um, I know Iowa was um, was pushing pretty heavy. Nebraska, um, and then a couple other smaller schools, Toledo, um, and uh, who else? Valparaiso. A couple other schools, you know. But I mean, I tell people all the time, I don't know what else I would gotten if I wouldn't commit so early, but. I mean that doesn't matter now, so it it's all in uh it's all in the works. Without a doubt. So what was the part that really separated Wisconsin from everyone else? Um, just just the attention to detail they had. Um, you know, the coaching staff takes really really a good time to figure out me as a person. You know, how my family is, and um, they just hit all the key points. They uh, knew what I liked. They knew where I came from. They just really took the time to dive into the details about me as a person, not even uh, on the basketball court. And then on the basketball court, they knew um, how I like to play and just um, they were trying to change the culture there of um, how their play style. And they figured starting with me with a good commitment would um, get other guys. As you see now, we have a really, really strong recruiting class. So I'm just really blessed to be um, the one to start it, you know. So I'm just really looking for big things come next year. Exactly. And obviously, you guys are now ranked number 19. I mean, rankings don't mean everything, but that's still one of the best Wisconsin recruiting classes. And I mean, you're talking about guys that you have another guy's the top 100 locked in unanimously with Ben, obviously. And yeah. you, guys, you got a lot of guys like Steven, obviously, bouncing in and out of the top 100. And you obviously have the brothers and all. Talk about what it's been like seeing each guy continue to come in and really what your relationship is with all of them. Um, all the guys are, are really cool. They're really funny. Um, I can't wait for next year to you know get down there and interact with them more. Um, the twins, they, they look just like each other, but they're kind of opposites. Um, <laughs> Jordan is more uh, outgoing, and then Johnny's um, a little quieter. But And then Ben is just um, – Ben is really cool, just down to earth. And then um, Steven's really cool. Just All the guys are really cool. I can't wait to, you know, get up there and just chill with those guys. No doubt. And so what was it like? Did, were you a part of the recruitment process? Did Wisconsin kind of communicate who do you want, or was it more you just kind of saw and heard from them? No, I just saw and heard from them and then, you know, just follow my directions or their directions or whatever they wanted to do. Um, but I was a big part of um, trying to get guys to come in and stuff like that. So um, a couple – I went on an official visit with those guys, and I was the first one to commit. So I was just telling the guys, like, come on, yeah, you got, you guys got to commit, you guys got to commit. And then they ultimately ended up committing. So it was just really, really cool to see, you know, the work that we put in with those guys and it was able to come true. As a change of culture, obviously it's a lot more athleticism. I think it's the key thing you hear a lot of people talking about. Talk about what it's going to be like bringing that new culture and really revamping how Wisconsin basketball will be looked at. Man, I'm super excited. Um, definitely with the, the twins, man. Um, their athleticism is off the roof, especially with the twins and Ben um, being able to run. Um, pay, play at a faster pace in transition, you know, get out, throw lobs and stuff like that. So I'm just really excited to see how this, how the new culture is going to gonna be with uh, me and those guys included. So, mm -hmm. And obviously being with Coach, I mean, talk about what Coach Guard is going to do and what your relationship is like at this point. Me and Coach Guard are, is, are really, really, really tight. Um, we talk every every couple of weeks. I either call him or he calls me. And um, Coach is telling me that, you know, um, Ultimately, it's going to be on me since I started all this. He's he's really trusting me to become the leader that he knows I can be. 
and just um, you know, lead the team and do whatever so we can get wins. But um, Coach God is really a really underrated coach. He has wins against Power Five schools that we was constantly would never think about beating this year and last year. He beat some pretty good teams. So I know Coach is doing everything he can, and he's a great coach. So. That's huge. And then talk about coming as a freshman. Are you going to be one of the main guys or how's it looking right now? I'm not really sure to like get up there, you know, um, but I will say when I do come in, I'm just going to try to do everything that they want me to do and what the team needs. So if that they need me to play, then they need me to play. If they, you know, feel like they um, want the uh, older guys to come in and, and play, or it's just whatever the team wants. So whatever they need, I'm, I'm there for. Big time. And then talk about who was maybe the coach that was had the biggest influence on you committing. Uh, I would probably say Coach Oliver. Coach Oliver was the head guy that recruited me, and um, me and him are really, really, really cool. So um, I, I talk to him often, too. Um, so I would say him. Uh, he was a really, really big part of me committing. That's awesome. And then talk about the roster. Who's some of the guys that you really are excited to that's currently on the roster playing right now? Um, I'm excited about uh, telling with uh, Meech, uh, Dimitri Trice, Brad Davidson, um, Aleem Ford, um, those are all guys I hung out with on my uh, official visit, and those guys are really down to earth and really cool. So I'm really uh, looking forward to learning the ropes for them because they, they've been through it all, you know, the games, the travel, you know, being a student athlete at the college level. So I'm just really excited to, you know, learn from them. And that's going to be something that's obviously an adjustment period a little bit. I mean, getting to the college feeling, I know each level you kind of go up, it's a lot more traveling. Obviously, talk about what it's going to be like and how, you're, how you see yourself adjusting to that. I think um, – you know, it's always good. It's obviously going to be a learning curve, but I feel like my high school has prepared me for stuff like that. So we're a prep school. So we walk outside every day. We got to be on class, be at class, you know, different times and stuff like that. So um, I really, really um, thankful that I go to the school that I go to now because it's really preparing me for school next year because that's that's a big part of it. So, And that's something I feel a lot of people really enjoy to I me, mean, getting more exposure in a way like that, but playing at a school – but talk about what it was like choosing St. Mary's. Um, not even going to lie to you. I didn't even know what to expect when I got to St. Mary's. But um, I'm really honestly glad I did go there because it's taught me so many things about becoming a man and, you know, just growing up and um, having responsibilities that, um, you know, other kids don't have. And, you know, just being able to um, grow up in a place like that, um, it teaches you it teaches you to grow up fast, and, you know, I'm so thankful for the people around there because St. Mary's has, is one of the greatest high schools, and, you know, I can only thank the people enough there for all the work that they do for me and um, all the other students, so it was really good. And obviously, like you said, I mean, getting to be able to grow up a little bit, getting a little more a little more taste of what could be like at college is a huge thing. I mean, obviously, that's most of your life is off the course. So talk about really your life on a day-to-day basis. Oh, man, um, I would say my life is really, really – um. It's a really good life, I would say that. Um, obviously, everybody has struggles and stuff like that, but I, I would say I am blessed. Um, and I just don't. After, you know, the whole Kobe thing, you really, you really sit back and realize that, you know, you probably have it better than what you actually think. And you know, um, I just, I have two parents, you know, brother and sister, and you know, a great family, a great support system. I would say I have layers of support that surround me keep me on the right track keep me out of trouble and stuff like that so I just try to keep the same mentality every day just getting better every day so that you want to leave today better than what you started yesterday absolutely I mean obviously the Kobe thing is a tragedy tragedy but I mean I think one thing a lot of people notice and learn what people keep talking about is the the, the importance of family and staying in touch with people and really just always being for each other and talk about now what it's like in your family I mean how do you guys embrace each other, and how did they kind of help support your dreams? Uh, uh, my family has sacrificed so much. Um, I would say both my parents, you know, time, money, travel. Just from playing basketball since I was three, just this has been my whole life. Like, my whole life has been on the court or just centered around basketball. This is the one thing I know how to do, and I do it. I think I do it pretty good. So they put all their effort, their time, their money into, you know, me, and so did my brothers and sisters. You know, sometimes, you know, traveling late you know getting home late you know hotels AU travel all just the whole nine yards just and I'm so thankful that um I have a family you know that didn't just disabandon me or you know lift me out to dry they actually helped me try to get to my dreams and ultimately you know me being able to commit to Wisconsin get me one step closer to that so I would say uh, I give all my family the credit
That's awesome. So what, what impact did they have on your commitment? Was it ultimately your decision or how did they kind of influence it? Um, obviously they influenced it, um, a, a good amount, but they always reminded me that it was my decision. So they were going to roll with me if I went to Wisconsin or if I went to Xavier or whatever school I wanted to go to there, they were down for me because, um, you know, it's my life and, you know, that's a, that's one of the biggest decisions. So they didn't want to, you know, influence it that much, but they just said, you know, it's going to be on you and we're here to support you no matter what you choose to do. That's definitely a blessing. I mean, having the people that's closest to you in your tight circle, obviously in your family, it's just awesome to see what God's able to help bring you so they can help guide your path as well. For sure, for sure, man. And as you talked about earlier, I mean, you were you were the first guy to commit in the class, and you, but you committed kind of early. I mean, you committed obviously as a junior last year. So what really went, went into that decision saying you wanted to commit earlier than most people did? Um, I would say just like I said before, like the way they were pushing and, you know, their vision for me and what they and what class we ultimately have now was just so remarkable like I just couldn't pass up on the opportunity you know the city of Wisconsin or you know it's right there and uh on the capital so it's just beautiful and I just fell in love with everything and I ultimately felt like it was just where I was supposed to be in my spirit that's that's the decision I made um, I haven't um, looked back on it yet so I'm really excited to get up there next year exactly i think that's something that god obviously gives people i mean just having that feeling of maybe you know it's the right place at the time i mean it might be your senior year might be after your senior year or it might be earlier i mean just knowing when that when that feeling clicks it's obviously you know it's the right place for sure for sure and then i know another thing what some people have talked about committing early allows kind of a little bit less pressure heading into the last club season heading into not having to really not really have to worry about all the college recruiting process throughout your senior year or even the big time camps leading into that talk about what it was like being able to go to stuff and just Know that you you found your home already. Yeah. Um, often guys would ask me, like, why are you commit so early? And that was another part of it, too. It wasn't the biggest part, but, you know, it was just, you know, uh, a weight off your shoulders, if you would say, because, you know, the recruiting process, obviously, it just gets um, – it brings some wear and tear on you, all the traveling, you know, the official visits, unofficial visits, you know, talking to coaches on the phone, texting and stuff like that. So that can be kind of challenging. But, um, you know, it was just great to – be able to like kind of let my hair down if you want to say just being able to you know know that I chose my school already and it was really good mm-hmm. and I know reading about some stuff I mean you grew up as a Michigan fan I mean you talked about obviously Trey Burke and some of those guys that you really always dreamed of being like but obviously that's not where you went but what went into that being able to separate from being a younger kid as a fan of them and obviously separating with choosing the right school yeah um I think obviously everybody when they get older they get a little bit wiser so I knew that uh, Michigan wasn't going to offer me after a point. Michigan State wasn't going to offer me after a point. Um, but um, you got to, you know, count your blessings. So I was blessed enough to have a school that really wanted me, and it's not that far from home. And that's always what I dreamed of, even if it wasn't at Michigan or Michigan State. So um, I just took it and ran with it. Um, I think anybody would be kind of, you know, wouldn't be had their head on screwed right if they didn't take the opportunities that they're blessed with. So that's what I just thought of the whole process. Without a doubt. I mean, obviously, Wisconsin still has produced multiple, many NBA players. And so talk about that. I mean, I know your end up goal will be to be in the NBA at some point. So talk about, Willie, what's the steps you see having to take to be able to reach that point? Um, I would say just a lot of hard work and, you know, dedication because um, the NBA is just the, the chances of making the NBA when you really think about it in the grand scheme of things are just slow, slim. You really have to just, you know, put all your hard work and dedication. And, you know, this really has to be your lifestyle. Like, if you want to be a pro, like you have to change the way you think about, you know, everything that you're going to do. It's going to take some loneliness. Like it's not going to be easy. So, you know, just being mentally prepared next year and, you know, the years after that, just to know what my end all goal is, you know, and, uh, nobody said it was going to be easy, but, you know, just that's what your goal is. And before I let you go, I was like wrapping up a couple different questions. The first one being who in your life would you say has been your biggest role model? Um, My biggest role model would probably be my father and my and my uncles, um, my father, you know, just being who he is, a really big part of my life, you know, me and him been at this whole basketball thing since I was three, like I said, and then my uncles, you know, they played in college, and they um, they know what being a college athlete is like, so they've just been helping me, you know, so I would say those those three people. That's awesome. I mean, I know also people, you, I've read about you obviously having a basketball in your hands, you've been able to walk, and so talk about that and the impact family has had on you picking up a basketball and loving the game of basketball. Yeah, it's really, it's really all I know. And, you know, my family has 
become accustomed to you know all the games and stuff like that so they we're we're all on like this this ship together and you know if it sinks it sinks and if it floats it floats we're all together in this um you know it's really been a blessing so um that's what i would say that's awesome and the final question is me being a man of faith i mean i was like wrapping up talking about faith so talk about what god's impact has been in your life to get you to the point you're at today oh man um i can't even really put into words what god has done for me in my life um just knowing that without him i wouldn't be here today or you know just being able to know that he gave me the ability to play basketball so every time i step on the court it's for the glory of god because i just i know that he it's not me out there playing it's it's him working through me so that's what i try to tell people like if i have a good game or something like that i'd be like it's not me it's 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 jesus christ through me so i just try to always honor him because you know one day he's going to come back for all of us and you know i want to be able to know that he's proud of me and you know i put in the work for him so that's all that matters amen man i mean just like you said perfectly resulted i mean obviously it is us that we do theoretically everything but he obviously created us and he's behind it all and he has a plan in store i mean just following that path and having him right there beside us is awesome thing that we can be able to spread his light exactly exactly man Mm -hmm. well keeping the light of god i definitely appreciate you coming on today obviously keep doing your thing the rest of this high school season i'm excited to see what you guys get done in wisconsin for sure man thanks for having me on man i no problem bro god bless